Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another railway review. So today we'll be taking a look at two Hornby W4 packets. I have shown quite a few packets on the channel. Um, I do like these locomotives a lot and I saw these two and I could not help myself. I pre-ordered these a while back and uh, when they when they arrived I was uh, I had to go and help my mate test them as he owns a model shop called Derails and I fell in love with them even more and brung them home that day. So let's get into the review. So as you can tell the locos we have today are Romeo 3702 Peckett W4 Titheringston Stone. I'm so sorry if I've just butchered that. And she is called Daphne. The second one that we will be taking a look at today is Hornby DCC Ready Romeo uh, R3703. Peckett W4 Bear. So let's take a look at Bear first. Uh, is there anything else on the box that we need to look at? Yes, we do. So we have the a brief history uh, of the W4 Peckett here. And normally the last uh, paragraph is about the actual model itself. Um, on the exact locomotive. Uh, so give a short little um history on the actual locomotive and the class as well so if you'd like to pause that and have a read you are more than welcome to so let's get into this so you guys have just had a read of bear let's get this open oh my god it's a bit tight okay so the sleeves on this are nice and snug should we say uh, as you guys can tell, it's just the standard Hornby uh, ice cube packaging. Just going to get into this. Okay, we got some bits in here. Let's take a look. So we've got a derails card. Um, obviously tested by myself. And then we've also got... What have we got here? We have the operating maintenance instructions, so you just kind of got the general uh, information, routine maintenance, DCC ready, running hints uh, about the motor, chassis and all that stuff, uh, lubrication and bodywork. Uh, inside we've got kind of where to lubricate your model, how to take it apart, that sort of thing. Then on the back, we have the safety notes and the important stuff. Right, let's get that out the way. Okay, let's get this clear sleeve off. Oh, wow. Okay. Just move these out the way. Okay, so here we have Bear. So I'm going to put Bear to one side and we're going to unbox Daphne as well now. So just let you guys see a bit of the brief history again. Uh, obviously the top two paragraphs should be the same and then the bottom paragraph should be the history to this local itself. So I'll give you guys a few couple of seconds so you got time to pause the video if you would like to read that as well there we go okay so let's get into the box oh. okay so that's the sleeve off so unbox this is the gump for the same that we got instructions and stuff so yeah, you got the exact same. So we got the derails testing cards that was also tested by myself. 
and then we got the general maintenance again that is all the same so i don't need to go through that again and let's get her out shall we oh wow she is beautiful okay so let's get these bits out the way right so here we are with both Daphne and Bear. Then back a little bit. Okay, just adjust the camera. Okay. So here we have it. We got both packets on the studio stand here. And they are absolutely stunning like always these are probably my favorite hornby models um steam loco wise these are probably my favorite hornby models um and the models just speak for themselves on this you got bear in this beautiful blue uh livery with the black and white lining and then you've also got Daphne this in this absolutely beautiful maroon uh, with the white and black lining. And it they both just stand out. Absolutely beautiful models. So we're going to get started on Bear first here. So as I said, it's got this beautiful crisp blue livery with the red and silver uh, name board there. Unfortunately, it's not etched. If Hornby had supplied etch name plates with these, uh, it would have took, it, I would gladly, gladly say these are probably one of the best models I've got. So, you've got these beautiful metal handrails that run along the side of the tanks you got the long one that goes all the way to the cab and then you got this small one i'm guessing to help the crews get up onto the foot plate or the running board down here you've got all these separately fitted pipes and other bits and gearing bits and that sort of stuff what a very nice picked out in red and I believe a brassy gold colour. You've got these lovely uh, little, I'm guessing they are the sandboxes. Um, I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, picked out in the black uh, at the top with blue and white lining. What looks very, very nice indeed. The running plate is nicely done in black. As you can tell up here, the glazing on the models are nice and flush. Really, really nicely done there. The under the underside of the models, you got these absolutely lovely, uh, this lovely red uh, kind of back to them. What looks really, it, it does really stand out against the uh, the blue wheels there. You got these lovely blue wheels um, with the black centers and the white lining on them looks really really nice and the nice crisp red rods as well obviously you got your cylinders that look really really nice indeed in the blue with the white stripes very very nice indeed you got these separately fitted cab steps they look very very nice we're going to come around to the front of the model here so with these, you do have nice metal buffers, but they are not sprung. You got the little NEM couplings, nice little separately fitted a um, coupling hook there. That's very, very nice indeed. You do have some rivet detail on the buffer beam. You got the separately fitted dart on the smoke box door there that's picked out in a nice silver, what looks very, very nice. The rest of the smoke box door, I believe, is moulded with some lovely rivet work. You've also got a nice picked out curved handrail there at the front um, that looks very, very nice. 
Obviously, in front of the tank, you have the lovely blue with the white lining and the black kind of stripe on the outside. You do have a separately fitted uh, lamp bracket up the top there as well, just in front of the chimney. What looks very, very nice. Coming round to this side of the model, obviously we got some more handrails on the tanks there that look very very nice just underneath the tanks you do have all that lovely separately fitted um pipe work and the reverser that looks very very nice indeed they have really done a good job on these models obviously you got the underside with the red and the blue wheels and the little uh sander pipes the little sand pipes that go in front of the wheels and behind the wheels looks very very nice indeed as we creep towards the rear we're going to start having a look at the cab if we just zoom in a little bit here so coming down towards the cab we got these lovely builders plates and i'm not too sure what the red plate is um I'm guessing that's something to do with Caledonian works. Um, I'm guessing, but those two shed plates look very, very nice indeed. Uh, not shed plates, builder's plates, sorry. Coming around towards, uh, coming towards the back now, um, we got these lovely separately fitted um, handrails for the cab that look very, very nice. And if you guys have seen my channel before um, and seen some of my other packet reviews, this one is slightly different. So this packet is an open backed cab. What is very, very nice, it's nice to see a bit of variety in the uh, W4 designs. And this one really, really does stand out. So with this one, you got this lovely metal handrail that goes all the way and holds the roof up what looks really 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 nice at the back um, and with this version you can very very easily see the lovely cab detail they have done in the cab it's unfortunate with the glazing it's like one big kind of piece um, that is quite visible when you're running the uh the locomotive it's a shame they didn't um do like a separate piece for them and try and hide that a bit better as it's an open cab but you can really really see the amount of cab detail they have put into the uh the locomotive though most of it is picked out in the either black gold well brassy gold and red what looks very very nice Coming round towards the back of the model now. Just zoom out a little bit. Obviously, we do have the, the back plate is blue uh, in the nice blue with the white and black. You've obviously got the lovely red buffer beams with the rivet work. And as the front, we don't have any sprung buffers, but they are metal, the hook, and a NEM coupling. As we come back round here... So, coming towards the top of the model here, we got a plastic, the I believe it's plastic, safety valve up top. Actually, maybe it might be metal. I'm not too sure on that, actually. Um, but yeah, you got this lovely safety valve picked out in this kind of grey silver colour. You got the molded water cap that is picked out in black and obviously you got the chimney and this lovely little whistle up top the roof does have some uh rivet work on it what is nice and so does the tanks you got like the um where they would seam the sheets together what is very very nice indeed so let's go and have a look at daphne So, here's 
here we have Daphne. So Daphne, as you can see, the different straight up difference from Bear. Um, there is a few things different, what is nice to see. So with Daphne, she is in this lovely maroon lined livery, what is very, very, very smart. This is probably my favorite livery packet. Um, it's just it's just top mark it just shows what a loco should be so obviously you have the lovely uh crisp maroon livery uh all the lining i've looked over and it's nice and crisp in this kind of yellowy gold um and black lining what is very nice indeed Obviously, the lining is a little bit different on this one compared to Bear, um, but obviously just shows a bit more variety of the models. So we also have these lovely crisp handrails, just like on Bear, what are very nice. They're all in the same places, so that is nice to see. Coming to the underframe, we do have a little difference to uh, Bear. So we got this lovely gold and silver piping. With this one, we have two uh, kind of side boxes. I think one's a tall box and the other is a sander, I believe. Um, picked out in the maroon, black and yellow lining, what is very nice indeed. Obviously, you have the um, cylinder for the rods and stuff. Um, that's picked out in the maroon once again and the lovely yellow and black lining and it is very very neatly done as you can tell on this one on the side of the buffer beams we do have these lovely red buffer beam ends with um, I believe is either white or yellow lining um, that is very very nicely done um, I do like that indeed. It just kind of brings a little bit more pop to the end of the buffers. Uh, the buffer beam, sorry. Underneath, we do have the black, the standard kind of black uh, background to the lovely maroon lined wheels. What are very, very nice indeed. And the lovely crisp red rods. Obviously, we have the nameplate there. Um, unfortunately, it's not um, etched. Uh, that would have really just, like Bear, would have just finished the model off nicely. So coming around to the front of the model, we have a lined buffer beam that is in, uh, lined with white lining uh, with the crisp red. What is very nice indeed. We got metal buffers with the NEM coupling there. We have the smoke box door, what is, I believe, uh, just slightly different to Bears. So the separately fitted silver dart is the same, but Daphne's got the, um, the actual hinges um, picked out in silver as well for the smoke box door there, what is very, very smart indeed. As you can see, just on, just on the bottom of the um, the tank there at the front, you do have some rivet work, as on the buffer beam. You got the lovely curved handrail picked out in the nice silver colour, and the front of the tanks are also picked out in the maroon, with the white line uh, with the yellow lining there, and also you have the little lamp bracket at the top coming around to this side obviously is pretty much the same on the tanks as the other side and on the sole but uh on the running plate there um obviously you still have that lovely uh piped detail behind just under the tanks and you got your two box uh your sandbox and your toolbox um looks very smart indeed Coming towards the top of the model then, we see a couple of differences from Bear. So with this one, we have a brass topped chimney, what looks very, very smart indeed. 
You've then got the um, the water cap uh, picked out in black, just like Bear was. You've got the rivets on the tanks. And the main difference is the safety valve. So this one's got the dome cover with the valves going into it. What looks very, very nice picked out in the brassy gold color. What looks very smart indeed. Obviously the roof is pretty much the same. You got the little brass whistle with the rivet work on the top. Coming towards the cab then, we've got this lovely marooned with the yellow and black lining on. You've got the builder's plate bang on in the center of the cab there. What looks very, very smart and is very, very crisp as well. I don't see any kind of paint spillage or anything like that. You got this lovely silver handrail uh, that leads up into the cab and the black one that goes all the way up what looks very smart indeed obviously we have all the same amount of cab detail um you can kind of see that glazing just kind of just is visible uh so that's a shame really it wasn't a small little window piece um like the back of the cab is real shame i don't really know why hornby did that um so obviously this is a full cab version and if Hornby can obviously do glazing like that so it is literally the glazing is just in the window and make it look that nice I don't see why they couldn't on this side um, that did kind of deduct some points off the model there for me um, but yeah it's a real shame I'm not too sure why they decided to go for the full uh, plastic piece in the back of the cab especially on bear when the cab is so open and it is very very visible um but it's a, it's a shame really that that one piece of glazing did bring the model down uh down a score there um obviously the cab detail is all there though it is very smart indeed um other than the um the giant plastic piece for the windows uh that's a real shame obviously coming towards the back of the model here we have the lovely glazing pieces that are just one piece glazings um they don't scroll all the way across the inside of the cab to go to the other window it's not one piece they're two separately um glazed pieces what are very nice indeed that's how the front of the cab should have been done so that is a shame there uh obviously you got a little uh separately fitted lamp bracket there and the little ducket of where the, um, uh, what do you call it, the handbrake turns, um, just so the handbrake didn't hit the back of the cab and you wouldn't be able to turn the handle. Obviously the back here is in the lovely maroon with the yellow and black lining and the windows are also um, kind of, the outside of the windows have a lovely brass finish to them what is very nice same again with the buffers you have the lined buffer beam with the metal buffers and the nem coupling with some rivet work what is very nice indeed and to finish off we do have the separately fitted cab steps so i have weighed these in and i was kind of shocked here so they both weigh 128 grams so for a little loco, it's got some weight to it. But the shocking part was they both weigh exactly 128 grams. So even though this has got the dome and a full cab, it still weighs the same as the tiny little uh, safety valve on bear and the open cab. So either they've added a tiny bit more weight into bear, I'm not too sure, but they both weigh exactly 128 grams. So I'm going to get these two absolutely beautiful locos onto the layout and we'll see how they run. Okay, here we are over at the layout. And I've got them both on the outside and inside track. So let's see how well they run so both these have been run in already um i've had these for a couple of probably a good half a year now um so 
let's see how they perform. Okay, they do not want to move. There we go. So my track's been playing up a bit lately. I'm not too sure what the problem is. Um, I think I need to change all my fish plates over. I think they've got a bit loose. Um, Cause all my locos have been stopping in the exact same places. So I think I've got a short somewhere. Um, Bears just stopped at the top there. And it's really affecting my crawl um, performances on my locos, as you can see. Um, really not too sure what's been going on here lately with my track. Um, there we go. So it runs nice and smoothly. They do. Uh, they do crawl when my track is okay. Um, I know it doesn't look like it right now, but they do perform really, really well, uh, just like the other packets do. But there is a fault with my track right now that I need to try and resolve. So I'm gonna move Bear onto its freight train here that I've got set up in the platform. And then we're gonna test Daphne here. Okay, oh, that shot off a bit fast. So yeah, as you can tell, uh, I'm having some serious troubles with my track. I thought it was just dirty, um, but it's both lines. I have cleaned both of these sections. I've cleaned the whole entire layout um, using a track rubber and some cleaning fluid um, that was recommended and I'm still having locos stopping for no apparent reason. Obviously points are understandable with small wheelbases, but this is straight track that it's stopping on and we don't really know why. Um, so I will be trying to solve that issue for the next video. Um, but as you can tell, they are nice quiet runners. Uh, they're nice and smooth and they do crawl really, really nicely um, when they have decent track to run on, unlike mine. Um, so I'm gonna send her off and hook her up to her train and I'll get some running shots. And there we have it, the review on the Hornby W4 Packet, Daphne and Bear. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, that just means you're liking the video. If you're not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to get to at least 500 uh, subscribers this year. Um, and pot if we smash that before June, I'm going to see if we can try and get to a thousand. Um, 
subscribing is free i know some people get a bit confused about subscribing is if it's free or is an actual like um kind of a paid subscription it is not a paid subscription it is free um and also if you hit the little bell bell icon uh if you are subscribed you'll get notified every time i release a video i do have videos coming out hopefully once a week um while I've got Loco's backlog to review, then they'll come out as soon as I get a new Loco. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I have making it. And I will see you guys in the next one.